It films Sensei here. Today in this video, we're going to do this effect in the pro version of Hit Film 2017. So buckle up, because we're going for a ride. So working in the pro version of HitFilm, we are going to create this effect. Now the thing is, is next week I will do this in the express version, but I'm going to have to cheat a little bit because the express version doesn't have the same kinds of tools that the pro version has. So we're going to start by showing you how to do it in the pro version. So I'm going to start by making a new composite shot. Doesn't matter how big it is, click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating my three-dimensional camera setting. So I'm going to start by creating a new layer, a camera, and then I'm going to show you the, th the actual three-dimensional looking area that we're going to be uh, in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new point. I'm going to make it three-dimensional. So there it is and I am going to rig the camera to that point. So I'm going to parent the camera to the point. So now what that means is, is if I move the point around, the camera's going to move around. I move the point around, the camera's going to move around, right? If I rotate the point around, and this is really where the, the motion of the camera is, up and down this way, or more likely what I'm going to do is around in a circle side to side like that. So you can see how the camera is going to swing all the way around, right? And be able to look at this from all sides. Okay, I'm going to move the camera in a minute, but first I'm going to set up a couple of things. I'm going to bring in my floor. I'm using this diamond plate uh, picture and I'm going to drop it here. It is not three dimensional, so I'm going to change it to 3D and there it is. And then what I'm going to do is twirl open the transform properties and I am going to rotate the x-axis until it is exactly 90 degrees. Now, if you look at the way the camera is looking at it, you can see that the camera is looking exactly on the very edge of it. So if you were to look at it from the camera's point of view, you won't see it because it's right there, right? So that and that's okay. Now, what we're going to do next is is that we're going to um, create our text. So I am going to go back to the view of the camera. And I'm going to say new layer, text layer, and then I'm going to make the text layer as wide as my project, which is 1920. I'll leave it at 400. And then using this little A icon, I'm going to click right here and type in my text. Right? Then I'm going to highlight it all. I could use Control A or I could just track it over it. Opening up the text tab, I'm going to use this to center the text. And then I'm going to drag the size number so that it fills the screen, right? I'm going to make it three-dimensional. And then clicking this arrow key, I am going to drag it up so that it is exactly the same height as the floor, right? And then if you look at the perspective view again, you can see it's sitting right there on the floor, right? So now that I have done that, I can actually take my new camera point and I can raise the camera up above the edge of the floor level until it's looking at that whole area. I'm going to remove the grid from behind it that the camera is showing and then I'm going to just rotate around to give you an idea of the fact that we're going to look at this in full three-dimensional space. Isn't that lovely? Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is bring in our stone texture. So the stone texture that I'm using. I found uh, somebody on the forums actually posted. I said, man, that's a cool looking texture. And I grabbed it and I'm going to drop it right here above that text layer. The text layer, by the way, we're not going to need anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. However, I am going to come back to it in a minute so I can actually put some shadows on this. All right. Now the stone texture layer is two dimensional. So we're going to make it three dimensional. And so now it's sitting exactly in the same place as the text was. And so it's a very simple matter of adding our set matte effect to it. But first, before I do that, I want to twirl open the transform properties of it and just resize it a little bit to 80%. This will depend on your 
texture that you're using. I found in this particular uh, project that 80% was the right size for, for me, but if you're using a different texture, or a different, uh, you know, picture or a different size of the letters all together, then you, you know, that'll, that'll kind of, you have to play it by ear a little bit, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the effects tab, and I'm going to search for the set matte effect. It's under the matte enhancement uh, category, and I'm going to drop that onto the stone texture. And of course, what I want to do is I want to source the text itself. So I'm going to source the text, and now you can see that it's only showing the stone texture where the text is in that exact spot. And again, if I were to move my camera around, you can see that it is working very well here, okay? Now, what's going to happen is, is I'm gonna add a parallax and I'm gonna add a uh, 3D extrusion also, but I'm not gonna do that yet because that really slows my computer down and then it'll make it much more difficult. So I'm gonna add those things later uh, when I'm getting closer to being done. I'm going to light the scene next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new light layer. And that light, I'm going to rename front light because I'm also going to create a back light. And that front light is just like I'm saying is going to be in the front. So I'm going to move it about 1500 pixels in front of the letters there. And then uh, what I need to do is the light's a little bright, so I'm going to knock it down to about 50. And I want to make it a spotlight. So I'm going to, while highlighting the light, I'm going to come up to the controls panel. And I'm going to twirl open the light properties. And under type, I'm going to say spotlight. Now the spot is pointing off in some weird direction and not where I want it to. So under the layer properties, under alignment, I'm going to say point towards a layer. And what layer am I going to point to? I'm going to point towards my new point my camera control point and actually what i think i will do is rename that point camera control just so that i know what it is and now you can see i have this little spotlight right on that point okay uh i want to open that up a little bit so i'm going to adjust the cone angle so that it's about 65 and that works for this project but again that will change depending on your project and how you're uh incorporating this into your scene. Okay, so now I have the front light. What I want to do now is I want to take that and duplicate it and then call this one back light, you see. Okay, and just like it sounds, I'm going to move it in the transform properties under position to 1500 pixels behind everything. And of course, it's turned around and it's pointing at the light still. So that's the beauty of setting that up first, right? It's pointing at the point in the middle, I mean. Um, I want to knock down the intensity of it to about 40. I want it to just be slightly less than the front light. And I do want to turn on cast shadows, okay? Because we're going to add some shadows to these letters and that's going to really affect or enhance the look of the three dimensions. So under the text layer, I'm going to twirl open material properties and I'm going to say cast shadows even if you're invisible. And there are some nice little cool looking shadows now, right? And as I move the camera around, whoops, wrong one. As I move the camera around, you can see that the shadows look like they're moving too. So that's pretty slick, really. That's pretty slick. Okay, now what I want to do is, is I want to add some light flares because there's a light back here, but obviously you can't see it in the camera, but we want to make it look like there's a light flare. So I'm going to create a new plane and I'm going to call this plane flares and I'm going to make sure it's black and click OK. And then I'm going to set the blend mode of this to add. So I right click on it and then I come up and I find add. That way it shines, it goes through the black part of the plane, which is right now everything, uh, but it'll show whatever I put onto it. So now I'm going to search in the effects tab for flares. And when I find the light flare, I'm going to drop it onto that plane. And there it is. And actually I want two flares. So I'm going to duplicate it, right click and duplicate. I can also use control D. And then I'm just going to move that second one. I'm going to twirl open the hotspot position and I'm just going to make it zero on the X axis. So this one's at 300, negative 300. This one is at zero and 300, right? Uh, and then I'm going to add the 360 video viewer 
on to here, and I'm going to, this will make it wrap around the whole scene, right? So now when I move my camera around again, this way, the flares move with the camera, you see. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, now right now it's still three-dimensional, and it's, or I mean it's still two-dimensional letters, and it's still... Um, doesn't have the parallax, the secret sauce of what of this whole effect. So now it's time to add the secret sauce. So I'm going to search for the parallax effect, and I'm going to start by putting it on the floor first. So I'm going to drop it on the diamond plate for the floor, and boy, now it makes the floor all look kind of rough and ragged. And what I'm going to do is twirl that open, and I'm going to drop that height map down to about 10 or maybe 15 works for this particular floor. Um, but, you know, your floor, you may change that. If I wanted to click the invert um, button to make it reverse those kinds of things, you could do that too. I'm going to leave it normally though. All right. And now I'm going to add the parallax effect to the stone texture for the letters. And boy, it looks pretty sharp right there. Um, and right now, it's not set to anything. And I'm going to actually use... I could use anything. I could, you know, cut holes and jags into these things. And that this is what this uh, height map is going to be using. Because I don't have any other thing else, I'm just going to use the floor. You probably might want to create something else, but you can kind of see how it's the floor that's actually cutting in, into these letters and making them look three-dimensional. All right, now the last thing I need to add here is the 3D extrusion. And this is going to be the main difference between the Pro version and the other version, the Express version, which I'll be doing in the next video next week uh, because the Express version doesn't have this. I'm going to drag this down onto the lettering and then I'm going to expand that to about 60 pixels so that the depth is really deep, okay? And it's kind of hard to see it from this angle, but if I were to move the camera, say, to a 65 degree angle, you can really see, you know, first you can see how slow it is, but you can really see how deep that extrusion is and then how, if, how jagged that parallax makes it look. And that's basically it in a nutshell. All you have to do now is just rig up your cameras. You can have multiple cameras looking at them from different directions, sliding across the front or uh, zooming in or out like I did in the intro or uh, even, uh, you know, swinging around using that Y um, rotation axis, right? So that's basically it, though. Like I said, next week I will do this same tutorial, but I will do it in the Express version, and we're going to have to do a little bit of cheating to achieve that three-dimensional look here. All right? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.